I. Come. I, ah, I, there you are. That's good. Yeah. Just going to. Uh, my iPad is also ringing. All oh, right. So I have to turn it off. Mm. <laughs> there. Mm. Okay. All right. Yep. Really good. Kind of dark in here. It's not too bad, Liz. Um, yeah, just a bit dark. It's got a bit. Yeah. It's a bit dark on your face. It seems yeah. to be light behind you, but it's a bit dark on your face. Yeah. Okay, hang on. I'll turn a couple of lights on. Okay. Oh, Jackie, I'll have a chat with Joan about the um, hotel. I mean, that sounded okay in the room, you know, the, the apartment. But I'll chat with her uh, probably, uh, you know, later today and then get back to you. Um, where is Arna? Hey, who? Where is the, uh, you know, the other conference on May 1st? Oh, oh, I think, well, I think it's in the same place. You know, I think it's that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. So the question then is, how long do you want to stay in that apartment? Yeah, okay. So I've got on there from the 26th to the 2nd, which yeah. is a week. But right. Arna goes first, second, so... Oh, well, you know, we can get the apartment, and then uh, if you, you're not coming to the conference, you know, I could get a, a room for a couple of nights. But we can chat about that anyway. Yeah. Well, I think I, I said I would. Yeah. Um, so the question is, do we want it for eight days or do we want it for seven days? Or uh, what? Okay. That's what we got to talk about. Right. It is available. Okay, that's great. So and if I get back to you tomorrow. Two bedrooms yeah. and two bathrooms. Sounds good. Hmm? So Liz, we're just talking yeah. about booking the uh, Airbnb. So I've uh, I've started looking at uh, those places there are I could send you forward you two or three of them that look very nice yeah I started looking too actually Jackie and uh, submitted an offer for one so oh, okay uh, we'll see it's in the financial district all right Good. this one is on Telegraph Hill mm. okay which is a 15 minute walk to the uh, conference center. Sounds good. And uh, it's also right next to these, whatever their MIMA or MIMI or whatever it is, which is their MUMA. Yeah, rapid yeah. transit system. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, this this one is about uh, three hundred, which is a lot cheaper than any hotel I could find. So yeah, that's great. Okay. okay. Yep. Oh, Liz, you've been busy. Yeah. I must. Have, I have to confess up front that I started on that uh, assignment of the writing process, but I got so caught up in transcribing the uh, conversation that <laughs> that's all I got done. <laughs> so I, I mean, that will be useful to us. That's fine, but. but I didn't get, and it's been a busy week. We've had company every single day except yesterday. Mm. So, so Christmas is over. <laughs> Although my mom's coming today and I'm packing today too, so. Mm -hmm. Packing for? Uh, she's moving into retirement residence on the 7th of January. Okay, well that's good news, isn't it? Um, I'm never sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's good news doesn't seem to go together with my mother very much <laughs> right <laughs> it's mostly it's the latest problem <laughs> well I, I was wondering if I could ju just check out with you both two things um, one was about um, Liz's video the 40 minute video that I've uh, watched all the way through and then the other one was just this question about um, a language for this kind of economic rationalism, so that if we felt that we could share this notion of... So I'm going to start taping now? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, good. Yeah, yeah, I, it was just that these two issues i just like to um, bring up. As I say, um, there's one about this um, point about a language that we might share together, about the kind of economic rationalism where 
which seems to accompany this recent economic globalization that's been taking place, where a lot of people are saying, well, these pressures lead to devaluation and demoralization. And that quote that I first heard in 1990, I think it was at a World Congress with Robin McTaggart, always has stayed with me as being giving me a language that I could um, use to acknowledge that we're all subjected to these kinds of forces. So that's why I just sent you that quote, just to see if that language of demoralization, devaluation was something that we felt easy with. OK, so that was the first thing. And then the second was actually linked to that, and it's linked to Liz's video, where with the students, there is a conversation which I'm bringing in something Judy Marshall um, who was a professor of organizational learning, Liz, at Bath, and now she's at Lancaster University. I think she's a professor of, um, it is learning, but there's also another, you know, attachment. I think it's in management, where she always stressed the importance of gender. Now, it wasn't to bring gender as the dominating conceptual framing, but what I've noticed as I listen to your video is myself feeling a gender, almost ignorance really, of issues to do with vulnerability. That what your students and yourselves are very open about are issues, for example, of trust, of the vulnerability that everybody seemed to be acknowledging they feel in relation to being judged. Now, there seemed to me to be something very important there that seemed to be connected to what Judy stresses about the importance of gender. You know, so I just raise that as an issue. It's not to make it the dominating concept, but it's like <clears throat> feeling in India, for example, our news has been full of this gang rape case in India, where oh, it's just terrible. Yeah. And it, it, it's obvious that this is a cultural problem, that the violence towards women in relation to the analysis that's been coming over our news is endemic in relation to Indian culture. So that sense of being a gendered um, social formation is something that I wouldn't I would like to bring into, you know, the analysis without it becoming dominating. Am I, am I making sense there, Liz? But that's what I got from your video. As I say, it was a delight to hear the openness, also the focus on values, that particular section on trust is very important, but also that issue to do with the vulnerability that comes with being judged. So those are the two issues, really, that I just wanted to bring in to say, mm. yeah. I did uh, do some transcribing of the conversation, yeah. Liz, and... Uh, I was trying. I was looking for some recurring themes, for one thing, but I was also struggling somewhat with uh, which girl is it? Um, Sophia. Sabrina. Sabria. Yeah. Sabria. Yeah. I, I struggled with hearing her words. I'd play it, and I wouldn't actually always get it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you're more attuned to her. The lilt to her language, but um, I I found them uh, all three of them really enchanting. I just I loved listening to them. You know, they they're clearly really thrilled with their new confidence, mm -hmm. and it's it went through all of their conversations, mm -hmm. but particularly Sabria. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not afraid to go out and do things on my own now. Now think about that. One yeah. class, your influence, where she was afraid before, and now I just go and do these things by myself, and it's no big deal. I think that's just wonderful, you know? It is, huh. mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and, and the other two actually... Um, I gotta remember the names, Becky and Brianne. Uh, they had had similar experiences, but it seems like at, uh, more of a eureka with uh, uh, Sabria. Mm -hmm. um, 
Brienne, uh, for a while, was kind of just listening. And then she started to open up about how she never sat by herself and reflected before. And now she does. And she never liked being in her room. And now she's, you know, got stuff up and a bulletin board. And she sits there and she reflects on what she stands for and what she wants to do and what's the meaning of life and that kind of stuff. And then Beck, she said, oh, it did transform me. It just totally changed me. It's a, it was that plot. <laughs> I mean, she's very clear. So I heard you worrying about, you know, the conversation. I thought, my God, this is just fantastic. You know? I mean, the evidence of your influence, it just is... Wow. And also, at the beginning, where they all acknowledged that it was okay for this to go on YouTube, I, I just thought, you know, again, that was lovely. But also, could I just ask about something that also came over very clearly, and that was your phrase, um, loved into learning. Okay, now, what I think you said, and I just want to check this, is that you experienced being loved into learning with Jackie and possibly some of the other participants on the master's program. Now, could I just check that? Because it seemed very important because I don't think Jackie and myself have focused on, you know, Jackie's influence in those terms. Yet, it seemed really important to you that you had experienced that being loved into learning, which you were then able to communicate, I think, to your students. And I, I just want to check that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the point I was trying to make, uh, Jack. And, I mean, I have written about it before in different pieces in my master's and then in uh, something I did, actually, in, in that class, Jackie, with yes. you. Um I don't remember if I called it loved into learning in class, but I actually, that is my concise way of explaining what happened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the fact that I didn't trust myself enough, whether, whether it's gender related or not, I don't know. Um, at opening up that uh, issue is got my wheels spinning, Jack. Um, yeah. so, but I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, but yes, I mean, you know, when we think about, when I think about the living educational theory as introduced to me by Jackie, I just completely felt empowered because it gave me a voice. It gave me a voice where I never had one before. Yeah. And that was wonderful, but I wouldn't have had the courage to explore it the way I did without feeling loved. You know, and and Jackie made me feel loved unconditionally, and that is not something I experienced prior to uh, that class with yeah. with Jackie. And when I, I and when I thought about that and reflected on that, and, and it was because I was thinking about my influences and, and you know, on others, myself, and, and social formations. I thought I can do this with my students. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when I put in a request to return to the classroom, you know, away from the board office, from an, an administrative kind of job, so that I could put this into practice. So it wasn't just theory. And I put it into practice, or I tried to put it into practice. And, you know, the feedback that I got said, yes, it worked. You know, and none of the students have said the same thing. And that's okay. You know, we all have our yeah. own language, and our yeah. own interpretation. I mean, I started off by, by doing what Jackie did and telling my students that I love them, you know, and you could see right away the, the you know, discomfort and the awkwardness with that. Um, but then I gave them the definition of love that I use, which is from Steve Peck's uh, uh, book, The Road Less Traveled, I believe. Um, Scott. Scott Peck. Scott Peck, Scott Peck, yeah. The, uh, the will to extend myself for one's own or another's spiritual growth. Sorry, the will to extend oneself for one's own or another's spiritual growth. Yeah. That's what I mean by love. That's great. Yeah. 
And I, I continue to share that with everyone, uh, custodians, colleagues, parents, any, anyone that will listen, <laughs> <laughs> interested. And, you know, always people are kind of initially, oh, I don't know if you want to go there. But as soon as I, you know, explain my experience and, and how it empowered me and gave me the courage to, to then delve into my own learning and, and you know, trust the, the journey, um, and I explain the definition, and people are okay with it. Yeah, because, you see, it's like that language of economic rationalism, of demoralization, devaluation. I haven't used that notion of love. But the way you have explained that, it feels, it, it is resonating with my own understandings. So if I can just be, it's almost like be clear about the language. So what was that? It's the will. Could you just go through that again? Yeah. So, so Peck's definition is the will to extend oneself yeah. for one's own yeah. or another's spiritual growth. That's great. And I've, I've actually added a little bit to it. Yeah. Um, that, then sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It's not it, to extend oneself for one's own or another spiritual growth, but to act on that, you know? Yeah. Um, because the will to extend oneself doesn't necessarily maybe imply action, I don't know, but it, no. it must... Re yeah, so you see that why I think this is really important, and I, I don't know if you agree, Jackie, it is that um, you have creatively engaged with Scott Peck's understanding, and you've actually if you like, develop that yourself. So that idea of action. Um, if you, I don't know if you've got the um, reference for the Scott Pet one, and then you could, if you could send that to both of us with your addition, it, it feels to me that we could then, um, if Jackie likes it, and I, I think Jackie will as well, you know, I think this is something that we can both identify with. We can use that language ourselves to explain what it is that we're doing. Now, that feels to me to be very significant, Liz. Mm -hmm. So, would you, would so you mind... So, last it, night... Yeah. Oh. Go on, no, go on. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking the last couple of days. I'm going to have to take a little holiday, actually. Ah. <laughs> um, but I... I created a new YouTube channel last night called Loved Into Learning. Great. Really? Yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to think of a way that I can continue to do what's important for me and to, you know, for when I'm thinking about my students, I'm thinking, you know, if we hadn't got together here, um, where, you know, where else are they, they continuing to get this message, yeah. you know, and, yeah. And so I thought, um, and it, you know, inspired by the gift from my children and and some other things, right? And I thought, well, you know, I can I can create my own YouTube channel and post things up there, put um, links to videos that have inspired me, etc., and just share that and see where that goes. Um, and then I can. So I'll, I've I've been thinking about how to sort of introduce that. Um, so it was interesting that you asked that question because that's how I plan to introduce it, yeah, you know, right. to explain a little bit about my journey, the experience I had, and um, how being loved into learning um, has transformed my life. And now, you know, there's a ripple effect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's really exciting, Liz. That yeah. is exciting. Yeah. Let, let us have access to your channel. I will. As soon as I've got something up there, <laughs> I'm just, just putting it into place now. Mm. So the gender issue, I mean, you know, people spend years studying those things uh, at university and come away with great knowledge and uh, perhaps some insights um, and then have difficulty getting jobs, you know. Uh, I know a couple of people who have degrees in, in women's issues or whatever, and um, they, they don't have jobs. They're bartending or working in stores and things like that. So um, I don't have a lot of expertise on, on the, the sort of theories in that field, but I certainly have a lot of lived experience. Um, I say you have lots of it. Yeah. Well, if, yeah. if I send you um, Judy Marshall's paper, 
which has always impressed me. It's called. We're missing the, the odd word. Say oh, her name again. Judy Marshall. Judy Marshall. No, is it not coming Judy through? Judy Marshall. Yeah. Yeah, Marshall. Yeah. Her paper, "Living Life as Inquiry." Living life as an inquiry. Yeah, and Judy has always emphasised the importance of not omitting an awareness of gender biases. Gender now, biases. Gender biases. Now, I'm convinced that when we come to emotional sensitivity, that we have centuries of one kind of oppression of women, for example, economically. We have another politically. Politically, yeah. Yeah, so it would be very strange if there were not uh, certain gender biases in relation to our understandings. And as I was watching your video with your students, Liz, it felt to me that you'd given them a confidence and help them to develop their confidence. In, and last, last phrase, we missed it. Okay. A Hel confidence and... Yeah, helping them to develop their confidence in understanding themselves. Helping them to develop themselves, understand themselves. Yeah, yeah. Especially in communicating emotion. Especially in communicating emotion. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, is the, is the you are very clear? Is this not very clear? Uh, no. We just missed the odd phrase. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm trying to catch it at the time. Yeah, sure. I'll just... And so, do you think that uh, comes from uh, well, identifying their values first, and then once they identify their values and realize how important they are to them? then they're able to express themselves more openly about those values, which include emotions. Do you know? Uh, yeah. That's part of it. I don't think that's all of it. Sorry, Jack. No, no, no. I, I, I agree. There's something about your embodied expression, Liz, of that loving into learning. So I think it's important that they are in touch with what matters to them. But there is something relational in terms of the influence that you're having and Jackie I've seen Jackie do this in terms of encouraging people to uh, share accounts your students were telling you how important it was from being uh, initially anxious but then sharing things with others and how that helped their growth of confidence so th there's a whole lot to impact there I think yeah But is my sound is still not too good? It it, uh, it flips in and out. Oh right. You're getting most of it. I okay. think that did you get all that, Liz? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. I'm not sure what the problem is, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with Jack that there's a lot more than I'm uh, certainly discussing their values and becoming more confident in knowing what they are and trying to live that way help, but. It's the nature of the relationship that you have had with these uh, students. And the fact that they are so articulate about what they've experienced and the in impact of that experience and how it's influencing how they live their lives. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. And also, Liz, I think it's linked to Jackie's notion of developing a community of inquirers because... That is explicitly mentioned in the video. So, so, again, there's that connection, I think, to this idea of a community of inquirers where they're feeling that they're confident, they can trust, and also that sense that you bring of being loved into learning. So, it connects so much, I think, through that video. Yeah, that was extremely well done, Les. Yeah. Good work. Yeah, it I think, was. Uh, there's a lot still to unpack there, mm. but uh, mm. I think you 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 must feel pretty good about what what they said about you and about the nature of your influence and how it's changed their lives. Yeah, I, I, I was ex extremely uh, happy because I, I did worry about them, <laughs> you know, going off into the world and, you know, we, it took a long time to build 
that community and it took a long time and and you know and I saw their vulnerabilities I saw their potential and you know they, they need to discover that for themselves you know you can encourage and facilitate but you know you're kind of okay it's the end of the year and off they're going oh I hope I hope they remember, you know, how how um, loving and lovable they are and what great gifts they all have. And, and then, you know, they go off and they're, you know, they're doing their own thing and they're, a lot of them, you know, having a lot of freedom and, and challenges and, you know, I, you don't hear a lot. And so to see them, for all, all of them contacted me to, to get together over the holidays. And then I was, well, let's do it all together. And, you know, and so, yeah, that was, um, you know, very much like my children coming home for Christmas. Right? These, these are my other children. And, uh, you know, they're safe and they're in a good place and they're growing and they're going to be okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're, they're going to be more than okay. Yeah. Because... Yes. So, yeah, yeah, and and Becky said in the in the video, you know, everybody should have a class like this. Yeah, but you know, it would work in math and science. No, no, yeah, and I, and I thought, you know, and, and then I was thinking about again about the the construct of poverty and how we think that education is supposed to help eradicate that. Well, it can. And it can't. It can actually perpetuate that cycle, right? So, but yeah, a class like that, a community of inquiry where there's trust and there's love can, in fact, help to break down that construct. So I feel that they're richer because of that experience. And a lot of it comes from their willingness to trust one another and their risk-taking in the class, you know. It's, it's, yes, it's my influence in, a, in the sense that I was able to share my journey and authentically demonstrate, you know, uh, what I experienced because I genuinely felt, you know, love for them. It, it was easy, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I, I just completely trusted them and it took some time and they were all at different stages. You know, and they'd all happened at different times, but in the end, you know, 30 out of 32 students had transformative experiences that were life changing. And I, I just think, you know, it's kind of, okay, they'll be okay. <laughs> and so I've done what I can yeah. in the amount of time that I had with the, the skills and tools and experience that I had. What, what I'm wondering, Jackie, because I've got this recording as well. And I could just extract that last three or four minutes, which I think was very clear indeed, Liz. Um, and then we could all focus on that, because I think there's a tremendous amount in there about explaining your influence and the values you hold. So if that's okay with you both. Sure. Sure, yeah. I'd love to see it again. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Understand it better. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's really important. Can I ask, just ask one other question as well, Liz? And that is to do with something that um, I, I'm, I'm unsure of myself in relation to a notion of responsibility. Now, it feels to me that you express what I call an educational responsibility. Now, there is a theologian, Emmanuel Levinas, yeah, yeah who, who actually talks about responsibility for the other. So he's arguing that our primary being in the world is one in which we are responsible for the other. Now, I've had difficulty with that notion myself, and I exercise a responsibility towards the other, but I can't accept that sense of responsibility for the other. Now, I'm not quite sure, Liz, when you're thinking about your own relationships with your students... If you have a sense of responsibility, because it feels to me, as I say, as I watch and I listen, that you have a very deep sense of responsibility. But I'm not quite sure, if I'm right, you know, that there is this feeling of responsibility, whether it is more of the Levinas kind, where you feel a responsibility for the other, or it is towards the other. There is quite a big distinction in my mind between those two. I would think that for most of my career, 
Jack, I felt a responsibility toward the other. Yes. And that's where a lot of my frustration came from and a lot of my living contradiction okay. uh, experiences evolved because until I could love myself more fully, I, I couldn't actually be responsible um, in the way that I wanted to be, which is for the other, okay. right? Yeah. But once, once I, I, you know, did the self study and began with self and was able to, you know, do what I needed to do there, then I felt more empowered and 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 more more able to simply be and be for the other. And I would many many years ago, I was walking with a colleague down the hall, and we were sort of struggling back and forth, you know, it was one of those times of the year where everybody's exhausted and, you know, she was a very dedicated um, uh, teacher and she's like, I, I just, I don't know what else to do, you know, I don't know how else, how else to, you know, and, and when they don't care, you know, you, there's just nothing you can do kind of thing and we were having this conversation and I thought about it overnight, and I thought, yeah, you know, you just get to a point where you, you know, you have to look after yourself, and you have to work with those who who um, are open to, to you know, learning. And I, I thought about it at night, and it bothered me all night long, you know, and I thought about it, at, and I went back to her the next day, and I said, you know, I've been thinking about this, and I think that we have a responsibility to care when they don't know enough to care. Okay. And I think that's the difference, Jack, Yeah, um, is caring and loving even when they don't care and love for themselves. Okay. Now, that's very helpful, Liz. Now, that really is. Thanks. Yeah, that's helped. I think that that's what I mean by responsive teaching. Okay. That um, it's my responsibility um, to help them learn. So I, respons I feel responsible for their learning and they're feeling of uh, being successful students. Okay. That's that's my job there. Yeah. And and with those students is to do everything in my power that they are able to do whatever they need to do in, in that particular arena of knowledge and to build their confidence so that they can write and think and feel and converse um, in the optimal way that they are able to do. Right. So it's not, you know, I taught them, that's the end of that class, it's I taught them what still is missing that some of them got it and some of them didn't. What else is needed? And it's, I mean, that kind of relentless pressure is, is there until I feel confident that they've all managed to attain the achievement that they want. Oh, okay. And sometimes I want more for them than they want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by uh, this idea we draw ideas from others, you know, we draw insights. And whilst I haven't used um, this idea that came from Vygotsky, about the zone of what he calls zone of proximal development. When I was in Holland examining his PhD a couple of months ago, the PhD candidate explained this idea very clearly to me. And it seems to one, if I put down the explanation he gave, it feels that it would resonate with you, Jackie, in terms of what you've just said about that responsibility towards the other for their learning. Um, as I say, I really like this idea, um, and I'll put this in an email to you both, and also I'll share it with Kathy. Um, okay, but c can I just ask as well about Kathy? Because I wonder if we could just, if, if you put this up, Jackie, and I'll do the bits that I've said, whether Kathy could be it's almost like invited to view, and then we could possibly take it up with her to see how much she feels she can actually share in terms of the insights and the language. I think she would have a really interesting response. Yeah. yeah. I think she might take us uh, even further. I okay. think from, based on what we talked about last time, she's uh, she's doing a lot of reflecting and thinking yeah. on these things. Yeah. Good. 
So I, I make the commitment to get this, uh, this writing done in the next few days. It's just been, and I get caught up in transcribing, and I think, yeah. oh, that's good. And, oh, 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 i got to get that. And then I can't kind of move on, you know, to the next mm-hmm. section. So um, I don't have a solution for that. <laughs> I think it's just sharing what we can do when we do it, isn't it? You know, um, yeah. it, it really is because I really was really turned on by that video, you know, of Liz's with the students. Um, and again, that's still going around my head. And then today, th- there's more insight and understanding coming in terms of the nature of those relationships. So that's really good. Okay, so... Um, you haven't helped prepare me for my holiday. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more to think. It's relentless, isn't it, Janice? It is relentless. It's, there's yeah. no rest. But, you know, that awareness of, of that relationship is what changes everything, yeah. right? Okay. Because probably, you know, there are many uh, educational practitioners out there doing what I do and what you do and Jack does, but without that awareness, yeah. it's it's missing a, a piece, you know? Well, that's why it's so important that you share what you know, Liz. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's a tantamount importance. That's yeah. what I, I'm thinking, Liz, you know, that, yes, the awareness is really vital, but then when Jackie says about the sharing, I'm also yeah. fascinated about whether by sharing this um, in the web, with the web space, where others can feel that they might be able to participate with us in developing what Jackie stresses, which is the importance of a community of inquiry. Yeah. You know, yes. again, yeah, okay. Yeah, because that community is, is you know, your reflection, yeah. right? Without yeah. that reflection... And then it also continues to, to, to inspire, right? When you're yeah. feeling beat right. up or exhausted or yeah. overwhelmed, it's the community that it, it keeps you going. You know, it does. Yeah. It's good. So yeah, it's, it's important to keep that connection. Good. Somehow. Okay. Well, great talking to you today. Yep. We're sorry we're taking you away from your holiday, Liz. But <laughs> <laughs> well, my holiday hasn't started yeah. yet. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, um, what can I do? And I need to get out mm. into nature is what I need to do. That's when mm. I sort of get uh, calm and, and yeah. reconnected kind of thing. So Leo is off um, for a couple of days now, and so I think we'll go for a nice long walk in the snowy woods somewhere. You know, right. it's much easier to be uh, in nature in in, in the, the summer and the spring and the fall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to have the perfect winter day to to be out there. Yeah. So. Do you know our news said that all this snow had just been dumped in Canada? That was our news. <laughs> I don't know if you've received it. <laughs> oh, well, it's not as bad here as it is some places. Good. Montreal got yeah. a huge... It was Montreal that was mentioned, yeah. And then the East Coast, oh, oh man. Yeah. My brother's in Newfoundland, mm. and uh, he said yeah. it was quite a storm when it yeah. came through. Gosh. Yeah. They, 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 he's on an island off Newfoundland, mm. and the ferry didn't run for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody that needed to get out was stuck there. Mm. Well, you enjoy your holiday, Liz. You enjoy your holiday. We'll continue. Bye. Bye. Yes. <laughs> when, what, what will you do, Are Jackie? Are we lined up for next weekend? Yeah, I'm fine. That's good. Yeah? Yeah, you just send a time and a date, and that, that's fine with me. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Take care. Happy New Year. Yes, and to Happy you. Happy New Year. And to you. Bye-bye.